So this question comes from Abdullah T, and it is very interesting because it comes down to that whole situational thing I talk a lot to you guys about, where basically the decision you make is really depends upon the situation that you are in or where you plan to go. So I'm glad to be one of your followers, and I may say uh, one of your students too. Anyway, I'm a second year student at the Department of Computer Engineering. I got a question in my head, and I've been trying to find an answer for so long. Actually, I'm a hardworking student that cares so much about his G. PA, and uh, so I really study a lot. Unfortunately, this way, I can't find much time to look for other stuff to help me in developing myself and increasing my knowledge, my experience in the technology field, and which I believe is so important. So the question is, is should I care about my GPA more, or should I focus on increasing my knowledge and experience? So this is one of those questions that comes out, especially for you guys in college. GPA versus experience. GPA versus experience. Which one is most important? And of course, me being me, I'll say they're both important. <laughs> get both of them, right? But, you know, in reality, uh, you can't always go for that. So the question is, is if you have to weigh one over the other, which one do you go for? And the question is, is base, the, 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 the answer to that really comes from, the, from asking yourself, what, you want, what do you want to do when you graduate from your bachelor's degree program? So you're going through, and in four years, or wherever you're at, your second year, in two more years, you're going to graduate from the program that you're in. Do you want to go to work, or do you want to go and continue your education? Because that's one thing a lot of a lot of you guys don't really think about is is what's going to happen once you graduate. Do you want to take the level you're at and and go work and basically do a job or create a startup company or do whatever it is you want to do, uh, or do you want to keep? Do you want to get your master's degree and then you do want to get your PhD? Now here's here's the thing. I mean, this is what it really comes down to in the real world. Is if you want to keep going down the academic track, then the GPA is the most important. Thing. So if you want to go for a master's degree program, and especially if you want to go for a PhD program, you're going to need a high GPA to get into those programs, especially if you want to get into a good program, right? You know, where you go for your bachelor's degree, it doesn't really matter so much. But as you go up uh, in the degree programs, you get your master's degree and then your doctorate, where you graduate from really become will become more important. Do you get a graduate? Uh, do you get a PhD from a no-name university, or do you get a PhD from a university that somebody knows that it exists? Um, that is important for things like as you go further, getting like grants and getting funding and all that kind of stuff. I am a graduate from this big-name school. Uh, will get you more money than I am a graduate from this little name school. So basically, if you're going to go down, if you want to continue down the academic track, then GPA. So it sounds like you want to study a lot. So keep studying. Go for the GPA. Uh, if you want to go out and you want to get a job, on the other hand, I would argue you need to go out and get practical experience. You need to actually work on Active Directory, or you need to code in Ruby, or whatever specialty it is you want to do, you need to do that. Because again, the, the biggest problem the, the employers run into is all these people are running around with these pieces of paper, but they don't actually know how to do the job. And I don't, I don't care about your piece of paper. I'm not paying you a salary for a piece of paper. I'm paying you a salary to push out a product. You know what I'm saying? Like, I need you to push out product. So, if I was an employer and you came to me and I was looking at two people with bachelor's degree, I would prefer a B-level student with a decent amount of experience behind them versus an A plus 4.0 student with no experience. Why? Because I know that this person person uh, with the, the B level, uh, the B GPA, uh, may only have a B GPA, but they've been doing work for two years. And that means a lot of things. Because if you've actually been working in this field for two years, uh, you know, doing certain things, one of the things that shows me, one of the things that shows me is that you actually, in fact, want to do this work. I can't tell you honestly how big a problem this is, is, you know, you get all these little 17 year olds and 18 year olds, they get out of high school and they decide they're going to go to college. And then what they do is they look around and they say, how can I make money? How can I make the money to, to pay me to, to do the things that I want to do, to get the big house and the condo at the beach and all that kind of stuff. And then they go, I want to get into computer science because that will pay me a lot of money. 
The problem is our field doesn't, if you don't like our field, our field sucks, right? You know what I'm saying? You, we kind of got to be built for our field. Uh, so if you are built, if your mind works in a certain way, then it is very easy to make money in this field. It is very easy to be successful in this field. It is just like, it is just amazing. Uh, if your mind is not built in a certain way, this is the most miserable field you could ever go into in your entire life. And so the problem that a lot of employers run into is you go through your IT program, you go through your computer science program, you come out, you're like, look at me, I'm so great, I'm so wonderful, I'm gonna do great things for your company, oh, I am gonna make you so much money. And then we're like, wow. And so we hire you and we put you in the pit with all the other computer geeks and in a week you're losing your mind. And then in like six months, you're all pouty and depressed. And then basically we spend a year of we're paying your salary, but you don't really want to be here. You don't want to do the work. You don't want to deal with the stress. Your code or your, whatever it is you put out is absolute crap. Um, and so that's what's nice is if you have experience, one of the things that shows us is that you in fact want to do the job. Because I can't tell you how many people graduate and they don't want to do this. Again, you know, I talked to you guys about stress. I talked to you guys about ego. Ego. I talked to you guys about walking in and taking control of the situation. And I see so many, like, there's so much pushback. Oh, Eli, Eli, you're just being egotistical. You don't need to be that way. Eli, people should care about each other's feelings. <laughs> oh, is that what you think? Do you honestly think any of the other geeks in the room give a damn what your feelings are? They don't. They don't. They don't, right? And so that's one of the problems is you get like these really nice, you get these really nice, compassionate, caring people that get thrown in <laughs> with highly functional autistic males and um, insanity ensues. Or at least one person's insanity ensues and all the other geeks are looking at them going, what the hell's wrong with that person, right? And, and so, I mean, that, that's, that's, that's the stuff that you run into in the real world by actually getting experience. And so... If you come out with two years experience and your degree, again, even if you're B level, I can, I can see the work that you've done. I can talk to the people that have employed you. I can make sure that you still wanna do this. You've been doing this for a couple years now. Is this really what you wanna do in life? All of those things. So, um, so but, but again, it, it is situational. If you wanna go down the academic track, which is not, I mean, you can get your PhD and you can teach and you can do all kinds of research and all that kinds of stuff. Um, then go for the GPA. Uh, if you want to go out and actually do work, uh, then go for the experience. That balance is that balance is something that you're going to have to to figure out. But again, for you too, and that, that is one of the big problems you get to is um, um, it really is kind of funny in the real world, uh, and this is for everybody. Is you know the people that do really well in school. You know what I'm saying? Like the teacher's pets, and they're getting 4.0s in school and all that. And I can say this now, being 38 and being being higher up in the profession, is you would be surprised how bad they do in the real world. I'm not even joking. I mean, like, I'm not being a smart ass. I'm not taking, like, a dig at, at, at the younger people out there. But you would be surprised how many of those 4.0 just prodigies or whatever hit the real world and everything goes horribly wrong for them. Because what you have to realize is, is school. And again, this is where I try to talk to you guys about this kind of stuff. Um, but I don't, I don't feel like it sinks in a lot of times. But school has nothing to do with the real world. Nothing to do with the real world. I mean, like one of the things you have to think about is in your, your educational program is that you are being taught, when you go to high school, at least here in the United States, you're getting taught by unionized teachers that genuinely argue against the concept of accountability. Right? So when they come out with standardized tests and all those kinds of things, and they say that teachers are going to get pay raises or promotion based upon how their students do in those standardized tests. Now, I would understand if they argued that these particular standardized tests are incorrect or there's wrong questions. They don't argue about the format of the test. They argue about whether or not they should be held to a standard at all. They're not questioning a standard. They're questioning the concept of a standard, right? So you go through the high school program and you're being taught 
by people that have, that, that have no connection to the private market, who are unionized, who most of the time can't be fired even if they, they are the, the, the worst teachers literally to be ever hired, that argue against things, like, like, like I say, even being held accountable. Like, it's, it's not, again, it's not a particular test they argue against. They argue against any of it, right? So that's what you go through high school. And then you go to college. And a lot of the college professors, they get into the tenure track deal, again, that they get removed from, from what the private world is actually doing. Um, and then the problem is, is so you get these kids that do really well in that environment, right? They, they are the shining stars. They are the master pupils of people who have nothing to do with the private sector. And then they come out in the real world, and they're dealing with people like me that, uh, frankly, when I graduated high school, I graduated 326 out of 425, and I don't give two craps what the hell your grade looks like. All I care about is can you grind. That is the only qu If I ever hire anybody ever again, the only question is can you grind. I do not care about your grades. I don't care about any... All, the, all those pieces of paper and all, I don't care. Are you going to come in? Are you going to grind? Are you going to put product out? Are you going to be the best to put product out? Or are you going to be like, eh, you should care about my feelings. Why don't you care about my feelings, Eli? Because your feelings are going to be a hell of a lot worse if you're starving because I fired you. <laughs> right? And so that's the issue is you get a lot of these people, you know, those great GPAs and then they get out in the real world. And the problem is, is they have, they have molded themselves into a system that does not exist outside of academia. <laughs> Right, um, and so that is that's one of those things that, that you have to think about. And like I say, when you're going through the educational program, just realize on both sides is if you are that 4.0 student. What does that really mean? Just because you're a 4.0 student, that doesn't mean you're going to get a job. Again, you're going to be dealing with people. You're going to be dealing with people, frankly, a hell of a lot meaner than me. Um, that all they care about is if you put product out. Um, and so, when you're getting that 4.0 GPA, make sure that you know what you're doing. Are you going to go off for for? academia, get your master's degree, your PhD, continue in that way. How are you going to make sure that your skills transfer from the academic setting into the real world setting? And then also realize, again, also realize if you're, if you're down there at the BC level, you're going to be very successful in life. And again, that's one of the things I hate with the whole modern education system is that they browbeat you into this idea that if you're not successful in, a, in the academic setting, then you're going to fail in the real world. And the reality, I am trying to beat into your guys' heads is nobody gives a horse crap about the academic setting. You are going through these classes because nobody with the, the intelligence and determination has really decided to, to destroy the modern education system. As soon as somebody turns around and really decides to destroy, do some creative destruction on the, the, the modern education system, it is, it is going to evaporate. There is... I... When I go and talk with CEOs and C-level executives, there is not a single one I talk to that believes that the modern education system does whatever the hell it's supposed to be doing, right? So do realize, if you're coming out with B and C grades, you're, you're not assigned to a life of failure. I did not do well in school. I got through a lot of school. I got a lot of education. But again, 326 out of 425 uh, when I was in high school. And literally, literally, the only reason I graduated high school on time was um, there was this English class. And the English class, uh, my senior level English class, I failed it the first semester in my senior year uh, because I couldn't be bothered to do the homework. And then, <clears throat> so I retook it in the second semester of my senior year. And, you know, I really meant to do the homework because... You know, I meant to do the homework, um, but I did the math and I failed that class. I failed. I failed it the second time in a row. And yet um, I got a very nice, I think, D plus <laughs> from the teacher because they just wanted me out the door. Um, so I rightfully should have failed my senior year of high school. Um, and even when I did go to college, again, I finished my degree in two and a half years, but um, I did it by using a bit of math and calculations, and so I shot for a 3.0 grade. So a lot of people, you know, they go into school, I'm shooting for the 4.0. And I looked at it, and I went, well, if I get a 
If, if, if I put all my time and energy into getting a 4.0 GPA, that will take all my time and energy. Um, I probably won't be able to work much. I probably won't be able to do a lot of these other things I want to do. Um, all I'll do is get a 4.0. So I looked at it and I said, I looked at my program and I realized most of the graduate programs that I would be interested in accept a 3.0 GPA. So what I thought is what I'll do is I'll, I'll target a 3.0 GPA and I'll work full time during most of school and I'll do my paramilitary training and I'll do these other things and I'll accelerate, do like literally 20 credit hours per semester because I'm targeting a 3.0 GPA. And now when we look at it, so I graduated, oh, 99 or something like that. So we're looking at it now 16 or 17 years later. And I can tell you, nobody cares what my GPA was one way or the other. I have never in my life been asked about my college GPA. And I sure as hell have never been asked about my high school GPA. So again... Those are some of the lessons in life to think about. But yeah, it really, the only, t the only reason the GPA is really important is do you plan to go on for higher academics? If not, I would argue get the experience, get experience, 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 because that is what employers are going to care about.